Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. We have three variables and two equations. So we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 48 and x plus y plus z equals 12. And we're supposed to solve for x, y, z. And we're not being told that x, y, z all have to be integers. So it's not a Diophantine system. We're going to be solving for real values of x. Are there complex solutions? That's a good question. Maybe something we can talk about along the way. So to be able to solve this equation or system, rather, we can talk about, uh, you know, a couple different methods. First method, maybe we can just go ahead and start with the second one, which because it's linear, and try to isolate something from there. For example, I can try to isolate z. So write the z as 12 minus x minus y. And then that's something I can substitute into the first equation, right? So now z is by itself. I can replace z with what it is. Let's do that. x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is 12 minus x minus y quantity squared. And the whole thing is equal to 48. Now, is this going to help? We don't know. We're going to find out. So you just got to give it a try. Sometimes you don't know the solution method, right? And you just discover along the way. So let's go ahead and expand it. When you have the square of a trinomial, you're going to square everything first, like 144. That's what, what I usually do. Plus x squared plus y squared. And then you're going to do the two uh, piecewise products, like these two, but also make sure you double it, okay? So it's like, kind of like a 2ab, 2bc, and 2ac. So it's going to be like the product of these two things with a minus sign, though. Minus 24x, and then these two, minus 24y, and then these two, plus 2xy. Okay, again, we don't know if this is going to be helpful. We're just giving it a try. Now, we can go ahead and combine some like terms here. For example, x squared plus y squared appears twice, so that means I can write it as 2x squared plus 2y squared. And then we have a plus 2xy. I don't know if that's going to help either but I'm just writing it, minus 24x minus 24y, and then this is 144. If you go to subtract 48, that's going to give us 96 with a plus sign because it's on the left-hand side. And we can kind of set it equal to zero. Now, one thing you can do is you can actually go ahead and divide everything by two. Again, we're not sure if this is going to help, but we can just give it a try, right? So let's go ahead and do that, divide everything by two, x squared plus y squared plus xy, minus 12x, minus 12y, plus 96 equals 0. Okay, let's see how this can help along with the original system. Now, what does the original system tell us? It tells us that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 48. Great. We don't have z squared in this equation. There's only two variables, which is or not a good thing, or may or may not be. But another thing we know is x plus y plus z is 12. And from here, actually, we can do, let, let's think about it. We can, let me copy the original equation, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 48, and then x plus y plus z is 12. Okay, let's see how I can use this. First of all, I do see a 12 here, which might be helpful. And I can factor out a negative 12 times x plus y. So let's try that. x squared plus y squared plus xy minus 12, which will be replaced with x plus y plus z, and again, I'm introducing z here, uh, times x plus y, okay, and then uh, plus 96, and that is equal to zero. Great, let's go ahead and fa uh, distribute this and see if that's going to give us anything helpful. Now, if you distribute, I'll probably start with x minus x squared minus xy minus xz, and then I'll do the y, minus xy, minus y squared, minus yz, and then finally plus 96. Here you probably noticed something is going to cancel out, such as these two things, and then x squared cancels out, y squared cancels out. We end up with something weird. <laughs> Anyways, let's see what that looks like. We have negative xy, minus xz, minus yz, plus 96 equals 0. Now, if you go ahead and take all these variable terms on the other, and put them on the other side, in other words, if you negate everything, we're going to get xy plus xz plus yz equals 96. 
Now, is this helpful at all? I don't know, but I just found it. Okay, great. Now, what do we know? We now know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 48. And then this equation is also given. Is that helpful at all? Uh, well, probably. Uh, I could do something like this. Uh, I could, uh, let's see. I could double the second equation, subtract them. I I'm not sure if it's going to help. Maybe I can try this. But here's what, what is going on. Okay. We kind of have kind of approaching the Vieta's formulas here. We know the sum. We know the two-way products. But we do not know the product of XYZ. Can we find XYZ from here? Probably not. Anyways, this system didn't really give me anything I'm looking for. Didn't help. And again, like I said earlier, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen, what you're going to end up with. And at, at least I tried, right? So maybe I'm stuck somewhere and you can find a way out. Let us know if you do. So let's go ahead and rewrite the system and we're going to try something else. Okay. So and I'm going to show you a graph at the end, which is really, really cool because it's awesome. Great. So another thing I can think of is maybe I can try to isolate x plus y from here and write it as 12 minus z. And then I can do x squared plus y squared, which I can write as 48 minus z squared. And then maybe I can do something with this, like square x plus y. We should be getting x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. And then we know that x plus y is equal to that. So if you square 12 minus z, and if you replace x squared plus y squared with 48 minus z squared, and then plus 2xy, maybe this is going to give you something helpful. Who knows, right? Let's go ahead and expand it. 144 minus 24z plus z squared is equal to 48 minus z squared plus 2xy. Maybe we can find xy in terms of z here. And then from there, hopefully we can come up with something more meaningful. Okay, great. Now, let's go ahead and... Oh, another thing that I haven't tried, maybe I'll do this first and then I'll show you the other one. But if you put everything on the left-hand side, we're going to get z squared minus, by the way, there's going to be two of them, 2z squared minus 24z, these two we're taking care of, and I'm going to bring over the 2xy, and if you bring this over, again, that's going to give us plus 96 equals 0, maybe this is something that I got before, I don't know, but I'm still going to give it a try, okay, so from here, oops, that's supposed to be xy only, you know what, I could probably just, uh, isolate xy here, and I think this will be helpful for some reason. xy is going to be z squared minus 12z plus 48. Now, what can I do with this, right? Well, I do know that x plus y is equal to 12 minus z. Let's go ahead and copy that here. And xy is equal to this. So from here, by using Vieta's formulas, I could probably set up a quadratic equation, can't I? Because I know the sum and the product of two roots and the roots will be x and y. But let's just use another variable to represent x and y. Let's use t, okay? t squared minus the product, I mean the sum, sorry about that, times t, plus the product, z squared minus 12z plus 48. Now, I want this equation to have real solutions, right? So its discriminant needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at delta, discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. I think this will be more meaningful than everything we've done so far because <laughs> they didn't get anywhere. But anyways, we tried. b squared minus 4ac, and now let's go ahead and expand it. Delta is going to be 144 plus z squared minus 24z minus 4z squared plus 48z minus 192. Four times 48, right? Okay, great. Now from here we get a negative term negative 3z squared, and then plus 48z, oops, 48 minus 24, that's going to be a plus 24z, they are like terms, and then finally 144 minus 192 is supposed to be minus 48, okay, and we want delta to be greater than or equal to zero, of course, you want real solutions, don't you, of course, now, Here's what I'm going to do next, which is, I think, kind of mind-blowing. I don't know. When I saw these things first, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Because it's math, right? Obviously, what do you expect? 
So I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative 3 because that seems to be the way. z squared minus 8z plus 16. Ta da da da. This is where everything breaks. And this is the beauty of maths. You get to a point where everything just collapses. This is where it is. Now take a look at this expression. Do you realize this is a perfect square? And it's perfect for this scenario. You know why? Because something squared cannot be negative. So, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Something squared multiplied by a negative cannot be positive. So it has to be zero. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So this expression cannot be greater than zero. Because that would imply if... This is, let me just show you proof by contradiction. If this is positive, then z minus 4 squared needs to be negative, which is impossible. Contradiction. So it can't be positive, which means it has to be 0. You only have one choice. This is the beauty of it. We're solving an equation using an inequality. Isn't that awesome? So now this means z minus 4 squared equals 0, which means z is equal to 4. Beautiful. Now, we have two equations, so we should be able to solve it. x plus y plus z is equal to 12, which means x plus y is equal to 8. And then, oh, by the way, once you find that z is equal to 4, you can go back here and just solve this quadratic, right? Replace z with 4 and solve it. You can do that as well. It's probably more fun that way. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, replace z with 4, and then you'll get t squared minus... This will be an 8t, and if z is equal to 4, 16 minus 48 plus 48, that'll be a 16. And guess what? This is going to give you the same perfect square. And everything is perfect. Everything is awesome. Yay. t equals 4, which means x and y are also 4. Wow, that's interesting, right? z is 4, x is 4, y is 4. So x, y, and z are all equal, and they are all equal to 4. Now, why is that happening? That's a good question. Before I get into that, and before I show you the graph, which I think is awesome, let me go ahead and talk about something else. So we were given this, right? So we could possibly square both sides, couldn't we? Like, All right, you probably thought of that, right? So let's go ahead and square both sides here, because that'll give us x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz equals 144. Well, this is 48. Subtract it, you'll get 96. Divide by 2, you'll get xy plus xz plus yz equals 48. What is that supposed to mean, though? This may not mean much to you, but it has actually has a significant meaning, or it has significance. You know what that means? It means that both of these things are 48, which means they're equal. So, before we get to Desmos, I gotta show you this. This is fun. Now, we get the interesting equation from a system. It means that these two things are equal. But what is that supposed to mean? It means x equals y equals z. Can I explain? Here's what you can do, which is, again, amazing. Multiply both sides by 2 and put everything on the same side. But rearrange the terms to write everything like this. And you'll be just mind blown. Trust me, this is awesome. Now, you can go ahead and write everything like this. This just means x minus y squared plus y minus z squared plus z minus x squared equals 0, which means they're all equal because all of these have to be 0 because the sum of squares can only be 0 if each term is 0. And this almost brings us to the end, but I've got to show you the graph. And you know what is really beautiful about this graph? Ta-da-da-da, it is 3D. Yes, Desmos, you're able to do 3D graphs. Thank you very much, Desmos. I really, really appreciate it because we weren't able to do that in the past. I had to use other uh, sources like uh, GeoGebra and other sites that I didn't really like. But this graph, I mean, you know what is really significant about this? Let me tell you. This is a sphere. Can you see that? And that is a plane. And this plane is tangent to the sphere at one point, which means there's only one set of solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.